Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. I'm here with the second part of the 17th episode, and here we actually get to find out what O'Day had against Hines in part one. So let's check out his play, see what I think about it. Right here, when it goes open from Hines, call from Lamb, with ace-queen in the small blind, I think there is really one option, and I think that is to just call. I think if you 3-bet here, and anyone plays back at you, you just get in some really bad spots. And knowing that Hines is pretty aggressive and Lamb is an extraordinarily good player that's definitely not scared to get out of line, you're just going to put yourself in a lot of bad spots. So when O'Day 3-bets here, I think this is one of these plays that gets him in sort of no-man's land where it's going to be very tough to know how to proceed on any board. So I, I pretty much hate this 3-bet. I think you just need to call. And then don't be scared to check fold the flop. I mean, realize he's only putting in two big blinds if he calls pre-flop, and his hand is going to be very disguised. This is something I do all the time in multi-table tournaments, particularly out of position, is take cheap flops. I mean, there's no reason to put in eight or nine big blinds here with a hand when you could just put in two and then play straight forward. And of course you will get bluffed off your the best hand sometimes, but, I mean, getting bet off ace high is not that big of a deal. So, Heinz calls. When Heinz calls, I you got to assume he has something pretty good. Probably like a decent pair, or maybe ace-king, ace-queen. Maybe something like queen-jack suited, king-queen suited, something like that. And Lamb folds. It comes 8-8-4, and O'Day bets out a continuation bet. I think this is actually fine. If you're going to 3-bet preflop, you need to be continuation betting a lot. Um, and this is obviously a great board of continuation bet. And Heinz calls. And when Heinz calls... Again, I think if, if we're sticking with that same preflop range, he either has an overpair here or he has one of those overcard hands with a flush draw. And the turn is the two of clubs. And O'Day bets again. And I think this is where he messes the hand up. When the turn is the two of clubs, Hines is not folding any overpair here, and he's not folding any of those flush hands. So now, Hines' entire range, unless he's just stone floating, which he's not going to do. I mean, notice how shallow he is on the go, on the tur on the flop bet. Um, he only has 16 million behind, and there's already 20 million in the pot. I mean, floating here would be insane. <laughs> so, I mean, unless Hines is just the craziest player ever, I, I think this is not a good, not a good, um, not a good float spot. So, because of that, O'Day has to realize this is a very bad turn card for him because the board doesn't really change. And if if the board did change, I mean, like say say the turn is the two of clubs, the way it changed made Hines's range much much better. Because before he had, like, you know, jack-high flush draws and stuff in it. But now he only has jack-high flushes and overpairs. So I really hate this bet. And Hines ships it in. And then, you know, O'Day just has to fold because he has no equity. This is a spot where, you know, you only have maybe six outs. Probably not even six. Probably, like, four or maybe even two. So I guess, given that he has no equity, he probably thought that, okay, I need to bet here because I have no equity. But... You just have to realize here that Hines is not folding any of his range. And if a guy's not folding any of his range, it's just a pretty easy spot to check fold. And I know a lot of players don't like giving up on pots, but this is a beautiful example of a spot where you just have nothing going for you and you have to get out of the way. And that is what he does. So um, that's going to be that for this episode. If you want more detailed discussion on stuff like that, definitely check out my training site, floattheturn.com. And each month I do a live webinar where you can log on and ask me any questions you have about poker, and I will, I'll answer them right there for you. And if you won't be able to make it because it is live, uh, you, can, you can email in your question. I'll record the session. I'll put it up on the site for you to check out. So. And also, you know, if you want to send in a hand history, feel free to send it in, and I will be more than happy to review it here on weeklypokerhand.com. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.